So this is a departure from my usual videos, or not really a departure, but a very interesting story that I wanted to share. Um, and if not share it, at least have it uh, so that I can reflect upon it. Uh, this is a story of my father's uh, reunion with long-lost Czech relatives. Now this is my grandfather in what I would assume is the very early 1900s. He uh, served in the Austrian-Hungarian uh, Empire's army, probably, I'm positive he didn't see action, but it was probably a duty. And this was uh, always um, in my father's house, and this is what was written on the back of that postcard. Showed he served in some 8th regiment. I was unsuccessful in finding anything that um, described that regiment. And this is my grandfather when he was a, a little older. I'm guessing probably in America. He was a tailor, and you can tell by that suit, he was pretty dapper. Handsome man. And this is the same gentleman, my grandfather, standing, of course. And uh, uh, his second wife, my grandmother, and my dad as a baby. He was an only child. And uh, my father always told me later in life that his father, standing there, my grandfather, who I never met, um, left the Czech Republic, then Czechoslovakia, and uh, I'll explain this later, but went back and forth a few times, but had eventually lost contact with uh, his uh, family because of World War II and then uh, the Iron Curtain. And this is my grandfather uh, in his older age, older, older years, with my grandmother, and he died in 1963, so I uh, was born in 1965, so I never had the opportunity to meet him, but my, of course, my parents did, and my older brothers did, and these are some of the um, letters that went back and forth between my grandfather and my, um, or his, his relatives in Czechoslovakia at the time, uh, they go back to the 20s and 30s, and they're always very interesting, um, Kashava, is where my grandfather was from, and that's where his relatives uh, resided all throughout the early 20s, 30s, and till present day, actually. And these are some of the letters, and I understand some Czech, but this is a older Czech, and of course, I only know some Czech, so the, this is very well written, and it's such a beautiful script. And, and I was able to trace some of these locations to where my grandfather uh, resided. Uh, they came to New York. Um, they moved a lot because he was a tailor, always trying to find work. So, you know, each one of these letters goes to a different locale. Now, present day, um, as I mentioned earlier, my father never really knew where his roots were from because his father had lost contact in the, uh, the 40s and beyond. But my father always had stories about where he might have been from, from his father and um, his relatives and had some inside information. And, you know, he had, he had facts, but they were not well-known facts. Um... But when I was first hired at my new job, I wasn't there a couple of years, and a co-worker brought this article over to me. And it was written by a gentleman who had the same last name as I did. And we had never seen that name. Uh, again, you know, my father uh, lost contact with his relatives, and we have a very unique Czech last name. So when I saw this article, and it was written by a gentleman with the same last name, I showed my father. So my father was very interested in it because he had been to the uh, he had been to Czechoslovakia in the early '80s when it was still behind the Iron Curtain and tried to find all the towns his uh, mother and father were reportedly from, but had very little luck because he had like only half facts and he was in a foreign country and they didn't speak English at all and he spoke Czech pretty well but was unable to find any evidence. So when I gave him this article, um. He contacted the gentleman, and um, the gentleman was skeptical at first because he didn't know whether it was a scam or whatever. I mean, this is the 80s. There weren't many scams going on. Uh, actually, it was the early 90s at this point. 
Um, they contacted each other. They contacted each other, and the gentleman Stan decided to meet my father. Well, they met, and my father had a few pictures from his father, and this is one picture that he had, and he brought it to uh, this gentleman when they met, and lo and behold, this gentleman Stan had the exact same photo, and they knew at that point that. It wasn't a scam, it was actual reality that my father had contacted his cousin. So, the gentleman on the, well, the little boy here on the top of that horse is the man who wrote that article that my father met that day. Um, and to the right is my grandfather's brother, Edward, uh, who was executed by the Nazis late in the war for being a successful businessman and looking out for his people. Uh, and the Nazis didn't like that. And that was always the rumor when I was a kid, and that was the rumor my father heard, and it was never a fact until they met and shared stories. So the little boy on the horse is the gentleman my father met, Stan, and to the right was my grandfather's brother, who were, was writing the letters back and forth that I showed you earlier. So my father went to the Czech Republic with this gentleman and met other relatives and finally got to the towns that he was actually, uh, the towns that my grandfather were actually from and most of the relatives are still close to that area. And you can see what a great time my father was having with his uh, long lost relatives and their offspring. And this is in the Prague airport and uh, to the far left, not to overcomplicate the story, but that's uh, the boy that was on that horse. That's his brother. So now here's here's another interesting twist. I referred to it earlier, but my grandfather had a first marriage. So he came in the early 1900s to America. And whether he was married before or he came or while he was in America, he had a first wife. Well, when he went back to the Czech Republic and then wanted to come back to America after World War I and before World War II, uh, his wife, his first wife, did not want to come. She wanted to stay in Czechoslovakia. And my father, my grandfather, being an entrepreneur and probably listening to Hitler on the radio, uh, he wanted to come back to America. So they got divorced, which was a, which was a scandal in those days, uh, and he left behind his, his daughter, and when my father went to the Czech Republic to meet his relatives, uh, he actually met her. And it was a very emotional experience, as you can imagine, because my father had always heard he might have had a half-sister, but they didn't talk about it much because my grandmother didn't want to hear about it, being the second wife, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but he actually met his half-sister, and they talked a lot. And to be honest, the interesting thing is my half-sister, or not my half-sister, his half-sister was very upset with her mother that she didn't go back to America because they had to, with, they had to uh, endure World War II and then the Iron Curtain and she was living in near poverty in, 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 the, in the Czech Republic for all these years. And um, uh, I don't know, it was, it was very, uh, I find this to be a very interesting story. And when my father died in 1995, I later on started to become interested in this story and realizing how uh, um, unique and uh, crazy it was, I started doing a lot of research. And I went to ellisisland.com and I was able to find the when she immigrated to America. Uh, you can see that in 1912. And where she was from, Corey, Hungary. And... Um, as I will show you in a bit, that name, I think, has changed historically throughout the year. So I wasn't able to find it originally on the map, but um, I, I concluded that it, the name had changed. And I found her manifest that showed that she came in to America in that year. Um, and that was all very interesting. Um, and then I found the, the boat she was on and the, the main. Um, and to think that she was on that boat traveling across the Atlantic Ocean is kind of incredible. For 1912 and then I went back to the map quest which I'm not even sure is a real site anymore but I was able to 
trace where she, the area she was from is Slovakia, present day Slovakia, to where my grandfather was from. And I don't think they ever met in Czechoslovakia, but it was interesting to see that they were from relatively close areas, geographically speaking. And I just traced out the area. My, my, uh, my grandfather was from near Zlín in the Czech Republic, present day, uh, which is Kashava, where he was born, is close to that. And again, my grandmother was right across the border in present day Slovakia and Krajine. Just some more maps, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I found my fa uh, grandfather, his first manifest. He came before World War I in 1913. And again, whether he was married at the time or got married in America, I'm not sure, but. Uh, all the paperwork seems to coincide now with um, all the facts that are coming together at this point. It shows he was from Moravia, Kashava. He was a tailor. And then here's evidence that he did go back after World War I uh, and came back before World War II in 1922 on the exact same ship, the George Washington. So here's the evidence that he was in America, left, got divorced, and came back on this second ship. And he never left again. And here's his manifest, which is very interesting. And I don't know if you can find this stuff on ellisisland.com anymore, but uh, I was looking this all up in early 2000s. And there's the ship he came back and forth to uh, from Czechoslovakia, the George Washington, two times. And this was just a census that I found a, that I was poking around to and... Uh, this census was taken in, uh, the date up here is, uh, what is it, uh, I saw it here somewhere earlier, oh, 1930, at the very top there, 1930, and my father was born in 27, so you can see that him and his mother and father were living in Saugerties in New York. I just found that interesting, uh, and then I found some. Then I found some paperwork that my grandfather had that allowed me to take my kids around Manhattan uh, when they were very young, like ten and eleven or twelve, and we walked miles that day and found uh, one of the buildings my father and his parents lived, circled in red there. Uh, his old tailor shop which coincidentally is a cleaning shop now by, uh, owned by Asians, but I can't think that it changed much. And some other old uh, areas that he had businesses in. And he, uh, this is a picture of the Czech Center in Manhattan, which uh, coincidentally is located in the area where most Czechs emigrated for, to. Um, cultures, you know, as, as you know, they kind of group up and live in cities and they become areas like Little Italy or Little China or whatever. Um, and in the Czech, in, in, in Manhattan, there's a very similar, not well known center, uh, the, Czech, the Czech Center, that commemorates Czech culture and is in about the area that my grandfather had lived. Oh, fast forward to uh, pictures exchanged years later after my father passed with uh, uh, between me and. His cousin that he met are gravesite pictures in uh, present day Moravia in the Czech Republic, where uh, my family on that side is buried. And this is a the schoolhouse that my um, grandfather's brother was executed by the Nazis in, which. Uh, uh, corroborates the entire story and there's a little plaque there to this day that commemorates him um, again he was executed by the Nazis late in the war and his name is on this plaque um, and there's also a little museum in town that kind of talks about him and the house he lived in and also that memorial and that's a house that's a picture of my uh, grandfather's brother's house who was executed by the Nazis in Moravia. Uh, I'm not sure when this picture was taken, but it looks like the 40s or 50s. And then that house is still there to date. And I also have these photos that were taken after uh, my grandfather's brother was executed that no one on this side of the family ever saw um, until um, after my father passed. 
And this is the burial, very Eastern European, the funeral. And he was so popular in town that the entire town came out to, to go to his funeral and, and to honor him. In that photo are his brothers and his immediate family, but you can see the line goes all the way down to the, the street from the grave site, which seeing these photos at an older age for me and knowing what my father uh, must have felt when he reunited with his long lost relatives, this photo really speaks volumes about the history of um, the Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia, uh, World War II, the Nazis, uh, uh, the coincidences in life. It's, it's, it's pretty an incredible story. And look how long that line is. And in this photo, the little boy here is Stan, the boy that was on top of that horse, and the gentleman my father reunited with, along with his two brothers and his mother, uh, mourning by the gravesite. Another photo. I mean, isn't this incredible? And this is just a photo that showed um, my grandfather's relatives in Czechoslovakia. He is not in this photo, probably because he was in America and it was um, taken in his absence. And that's another photo without the circles. So I wanted to share this. I thought it was a very good, um, very interesting story. Um you know, you could probably write a novel about something like this. and uh, um, But I'm sure everybody has a story that's very similar to this. And I just hope um, you all kind of enjoyed uh, my uh, history lesson with my family and their reunification with Czech relatives. Well, thank you for listening and uh, subscribe to Jakuba. Take care, everybody.